dietitians with UK Health and Wellness. Karen, who's my lovely assistant, is the other dietitian with UK Health and Wellness. And this is part of our Kitchen Skills Workshop Series. We do these maybe two or three times a semester. This is the second one of this semester. Um, and you can find out about these series by subscribing to our Eat Well, Healthy You newsletter. There is a link to subscribe to that newsletter on our website, which is uky.edu slash hr slash wellness, in case you're not already subscribed to that. But I know a lot of you are, so thank you for coming today. Um, and we are going to talk about knife skills today. Um, as dietitians, Karen and I are always talking about how important it is that you prepare food at home. You know that's going to be the healthiest option that you have a lot of the time. But what happens if, you know, you're staring at this knife and you're just like, I can't use this. How am I supposed to chop food if I can't even use this knife? Or what am I supposed to do with this thing? This is really hard to tackle, right? So hopefully you'll walk away um, from today's little workshop with a little bit more knowledge in that area. We do have some handouts that are all available to you, so make sure that you have the Knife Skills packet that says Knife Skills 101, and that will just sort of be a repeat of what I'm talking about today. Okay, it's got um, skills on how to chop and how to mince, how to slice. It's also got <coughs> examples of different kinds of cuts that I'll sort of demonstrate for you today, as well as the different kinds of knives that are available to you to buy. All right? So, this here, this knife, is perhaps the most popular kind of knife. Okay, this is called a chef's knife. All right? Sometimes people call it a butcher knife, but I think that has more to do with horror movies than kitchen <laughs> skills, okay? Um, and this is my favorite knife. This is my preferred knife. It's my all-purpose knife. Um, and I'll do pretty much anything with it. Now, of course, that's because I have a certain level of familiarity with it, right? Um, some people find that this is a little bit intimidating because it is a larger size knife. Do I have anyone? I see some nodding going on. Okay. Um, but I will tell you that um, I will tell you that the more that you use it, the more comfortable you do get. Okay, and that's really the only way that you get comfortable is you have to use it. Um, the safest knife, no matter how large it's going to be, is going to be a what? Does anyone have ideas? A sharp knife. That's exactly right. Okay. A dull knife is way, way, way more dangerous than a sharp knife. And if that seems counterintuitive to you, I just want you to think about how much force you have to exert on a dull knife for it to make it through a tomato. Right? And all of a sudden that tomato is going skidding, your knife is coming down, who knows what's underneath that blade, okay? But if your knife is sharp, you don't have to exert that force, it's going to be very simple to use, okay? And that's the number one tip of knife safety, all right, is a sharp knife. I am going to demonstrate how to sharpen it. This here is called a steel, okay? And this is used to keep the edge on a knife. So if you look at your knife, all right, you should be able to see a slight edge. It's going to be a little bit shinier, maybe, than the rest of your blade. All right? If that edge is not there, then you need to use this guy. Okay? If you buy a knife set, this will usually come with it. All right? Does everyone have one of these? Is it? Okay. Have you ever used it? Or maybe like your son or something uses it for like a sword fight? Because that's what my brother always used to use it for. Um, <laughs> But yes, you do want to use it to actually sharpen your knife. Um, and this, like I said, will bring the edge back. If you do use this and it's, your knife still isn't really sharp like you need it to be, all right, then you may need to take it to be professionally sharpened where they're going to use something like a stone and really use tools that you may not have at home. Okay? There are two places in town where you can take your knife to be sharpened. One is Chevy Chase Hardware. Um, over there on uh, East High, Tate's Creek, right where it turns into Tate's Creek, over by that new Kroger on Euclid, okay? Um, and they do all kinds of blade sharpening for you, but they do specifically do kitchen knife. And then there's one that sounds kind of sketchy, but I checked it out and I promise it's legit. Um, you can drop off knives at J&H Outdoor Store, which is over off of Regency Road, 
and there is a man who will come pick them up and sharpen them for you. Okay. The name of his business is ScarySharpKnives.com. <laughs> Um, but he is, you know, he's, his name is Joshua Fightmaster, um, and he will work out a um, cost for you as well. But he will drop, pick them up at J&H and drop them off back for you when they are sharpened. So if you do feel you need to get them professionally sharpened, that's where you would go. Okay? If you are just trying to get that edge, though, the best and the sort of the easiest way for you to do that is going to be to hold the steel against your table or against your board. All right? Because that's going to give you a lot of stability. And then you're going to hold your knife properly. And you want to make sure that you're holding your knife like you would a tennis racket, okay? Or even like you're shaking someone's hand. So that's kind of the angle that you want to have with your wrist and with your hand when you're holding the knife. So if everyone wants to pick up their knife and just sort of make sure that you're holding it, you always want to hold the blade down, okay? You don't want to hold it towards you. You don't want to hold it towards someone else. You want to hold the blade down when you're using it. And notice how my finger just sort of naturally, my pointer finger, comes against the hilt of the blade. That's giving me more stability. My thumb is on the opposite side. So that's where you can really see it is sort of similar to shaking somebody's hand, okay? That's the sort of comfort level that you're looking for when you hold your knife, all right? When you're sharpening it, put your steel down on the table or on your board, and you wanna hold your knife it's going to be somewhere around a 20 or 25 degree angle. Okay? I know that you're not going to be getting your protractor out to measure the angle, but if you can imagine a matchbook being held between the steel and your blade, that's about the distance that you're looking for. Does that make sense to y'all? And as you do this, you're going to bring the edge of your knife all the way down the length of the steel. Okay? And you're going to do this about two or three times. Now, when you see it on TV shows, they go super fast and it's really like fancy. You don't have to do that, okay? You want to be slow and deliberate, and that's how you know you're going to be doing it safely, okay? Once you do it a few times on this side, then you can flip your knife over and do it on the other side, okay? And I usually just do it on the same side of the steel. So it's not going to be super loud until you get to the and this is something that you would ideally do every time that you use your knife. You want to make sure, again, you have that sharp blade because a sharp knife equals safe. Would anyone like to sharpen their knife? Yes. And if anyone else wants to do this, then um, pass it around and use it. Okay. So that's how you sharpen your chef's knife. I have a few other knives just to show you here. One is maybe what you all use more normally. I see some nodding. This is called a paring knife. Okay? And this is fine to use if you are more comfortable with it, but it's not going to give you the strength that you need or even the surface area that you need for more chopping. Okay? It's a little bit more difficult to cut an onion with this, for example. It's going to take more time. And if one of the issues that you have with cooking at home a lot is going to be time, which let's not lie, that's a big issue for most of us, okay? you want to make sure you give yourself the advantage. And an advantage in this case is going to be using a bigger knife. All right? But I still told Annette that you would be able to use that one, so there you go. And then I have another knife here, and this I think is the third knife that you would need in your arsenal if you are just starting from scratch, okay? So we've talked about the chef's knife, we've talked about the paring knife. Do y'all know what this one is called? Serrated knife, right? A serrated knife has teeth, okay? And this is very, very handy for cutting two things in particular. One is that tomato that I mentioned. So if you have a nice, ripe August tomato, sometimes it's hard to use this knife, especially if it's not sharp. But something with teeth is really going to help you. And so I like to use this for slicing a tomato, especially for new folks to knives. And the other thing is bread. Okay, This is going to be very useful for bread, and that's why this is also sometimes called a bread knife. All right, But those three knives, the chefs, the pairing, and the serrated, are really all so if you've got a big knife set and you're not really sure what to do with the rest of them, you can just put them away out of sight for a little bit. Okay? Any questions so far? Okay. I see some, maybe a little confusion. Okay. All right. So we've talked about how to hold your knife. All right? 
And I also want to show you how to use it, right? That's why you guys are here. So you want to make sure that not only are you holding your knife properly, but you're also holding whatever you're cutting properly. An onion is one of those things that can sometimes be a little bit difficult, right? How do you guys feel about chopping onions? Okay. Always makes me cry. Makes you cry. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a big thing. I will tell you that if you keep your onions in the refrigerator, that'll help a little bit, okay? And I will also tell you that a sharp knife is going to be less likely to damage the cells of the onion, or at least it'll damage them really quickly, all right? A sharper knife will be helpful for you in crying a little bit less, okay? The other things about running water or eating bread or having a candle near you, those don't necessarily work so much, okay? <laughs> so maybe a refrigerated onion and a sharp knife. And I will tell you that these onions were refrigerated, so hopefully we won't cry too much. Okay, waterproof mascara? Mm -hmm. Robert? No? Yeah, okay, awesome. <laughs> Um, so there are onions on the table for those of you who do have knives. Um, there are cutting boards available too if you did grab one of those. One thing I do want to point out about the colored cutting boards that some of you have, you'll notice that the two sides are different, right? And Betsy, I'm just going to hold yours up here for a second. This one is smooth. This one is grippy. Put the grippy side down. That will keep it from moving around the table quite as much. If you have a cutting board that does not have a grippy side, like this one or like this one, and you find that you have trouble with the cutting board moving around the counter, has anyone found that? A good tip is to take either a paper towel or a cloth napkin or a dish towel and just dampen it and then put it underneath your board. That will create friction and your board won't slide around the counter. Does that make sense? It's a good kitchen tip. Okay. So, if you all want to cut an onion, I do have some gloves um, behind you on that long table. If you guys don't want to smell like onions all day, that's up to you. I don't mind it so much, but your office mates may not love it, okay? Um, and there are a few ways to chop an onion. There are videos online if you feel like you need a closer look after this class. But I'm going to show you a version that has maybe one fewer step than a lot of the videos that are on. Okay. The first thing that you're going to want to do with your onion is get the excess skin off. Because that skin can sometimes slide around and make it difficult to cut through. Each table does have a trash can, so if you need to sweep, you may need to look around for it, but it is there. There's one on each table. And so if you need to sweep your skins in, then you can do that. And you don't have to get all the skin off, okay? Just the very loose, papery part. And again, this is just a step to make it a little bit easier. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you're a little bit nervous about your knife skills, it can help. All right, good deal. Is anyone crying yet? Okay, good, all right, so so far so good. Hold your, knife, hold your onion and you're going to cut it in half, okay? And I'd like you to hold your onion, pretend that my hand is on the board right now, Hold it like this. So if you make almost a C with your hands, and that C stands for claw, okay? You're gonna hold your onion as if your hand is a claw. Once you have it on the board, you'll notice that if you hold your onion like this, are your fingers sticking out? No. Your fingers are out of the way. And that's another important safety tip when you're working with the knife. You don't want your fingers in the way, okay? So holding it like this will give you that stability. If you feel that this is still not stable enough for you, I'm going to give you another tip. Take your knife and just cut a little tiny slice out of your onion. That will help create a flatter surface. If at any time you are ever nervous about cutting anything, cut a little slice out of it and create that flat plane because that will also give you more stability. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Okay. So let's try to cut our onion in half and what I'd like to see, remember you're holding your knife like you're shaking hands. Keep the tip of your knife on your board. 
get that claw and then just push down. And I know Annette, I'm sorry you've got that pairing that it's not making it easy. <laughs> All right. Now does that feel different than what you usually do if you have the tip of that knife on your board? Have the tip of your and I can come over and show you if you like. It's okay. just underscores how much easier this can be to use once you get the hang of it, okay? But keeping your knife on the board like that. Onions. Who needs an onion? Robert? I got it. You got it? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, we do have spares. So just let me know. Um, but keeping that stability is going to be important for you, okay? And also when you do that, you'll notice that it's not super loud. Okay? and you're not hitting your knife on the board, which is also going to be good for your knife blade. Okay, Because if you're constantly chop, 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 and even though that sounds really cool and professional, okay, you don't want to make that noise because what you're doing is you're just banging the heck out of that blade and making it dull. Okay, So at all times, there should be contact between your knife and that board. Okay, And even if you just want to practice with no veggie, Right? You just sort of have it like a rocking horse. Does that make sense to everybody? Kind of? And again, the more that you practice, the more natural this will feel. All right. So now you've got two halves of your onion. You're going to slice off each end. going to be difficult for you to cut through. All right. Once you've got your clean half, notice that nice big flat surface area. Okay. Again, that's going to contribute to stability. And keeping your knife tip on the board, we're going to practice a slicing technique, which is literally pushing. If you all want to come up close and see before you do it, that's fine. I don't bite. All right but pushing your knife through the onion. All right? Do you want to hear go this way? I am going against the grain. Yeah, just like you're doing it. Yeah, exactly like you're doing. And you may not even be going through the whole onion, and that is okay. Good. How are you feeling over there? I'm going to come over and visit. Um, 
or maybe for some sort of, sometimes you see those longer strips of onion, okay? Um, but this is what you're going to come up with. It's just going to be bigger pieces. Then you turn your onion to a right angle. So one quadrant turn. And you're going to cut the other way. And you're establishing a grid cut pattern. And by doing that, again, keeping your knife on the board at all times, see how quiet we're being? You're going to come up with a nice dice. Now, this is not a cooking school dice. Gordon Ramsay is going to yell at us if he sees us, OK? But this is totally serviceable for a stew or a soup that you are going to make at home. All right? Any questions about this? I see some nice dicing. demonstrate that again because I have my own pepper, okay? If you look at the stem, go to the right and cut directly down the pepper, like this, just like that. So we are not cutting down the middle of the pepper. We are cutting down just to the right of the stem. And by doing this, we're creating four nice, pretty flat rectangles. See what I've done here. Is this different than you all cut up peppers at home? Some yes, some no. Okay. Again, the reason why I did this is to create that flat surface area. All right. The more stable you are, the safer you're going to be. Okay. How are we doing? Everyone cutting up good? Okay. All right. Once you have your planks like this, and if you need some extra, does anyone need extra? You can sort of pull the seeds off, all right? Or if you want to be even fancier and practice a little bit, you can use your knife to cut the membrane out. The membrane does not taste bad. The texture is just a little bit different than the pepper, okay? And if you want to cut it away from the pepper, then you can certainly do that with your knife. All right? Again, make sure you're keeping your fingers out of the way using that claw. When you are holding your fingers that way, like I said, your fingers tip isn't sticking out. And also, the sides of your knuckles act almost as a guard for the knife. Does that make sense? See, everyone's kind of good in the same place. OK, good. So what we do here, once we've got our nice, clean plank, Okay, and that's what this is going to be called. You can do a few different things. You can cut strips. So if you are making fajitas, all right, you can go on and hold this. And some people will ask me, should I hold it this way or hold it this way? Okay. And again, it depends on your knife. Some knives, it's difficult to cut through the skin of the pepper because it's a little bit slippery. So if you're not feeling confident, go on and hold your pepper skin side down. 
okay, that gives you just a little bit more purchase on the pepper. And again, keeping that knife tip down, go on and push through. Keep your fingers out of the way. And come on up. All right. And you'll be having, as a result, some nice pepper strips. Okay, thanks. We'll have the video online too. All right. Then again, you turn it. Yeah, you can eat it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> eat away. And then if you don't want strips, okay, and again, these are going to be called strips or batons. You can turn them that angle, cut across, and you have a nice mince. And that's going to be something like if you're making a pico or a homemade salsa, or maybe you just want a smaller diced pepper for some reason, okay? But keeping, again, keeping that tip, and I can see a lot of you are doing that. You're keeping that stability, you're keeping that control. And go on and eat your pepper if you didn't hear me say that. All right. Any questions about the pepper? Okay, I know that we're getting close to time, and so I do want to just mention a couple of other things, and then I have some other veggies that I'll demonstrate if you all can stay for a little bit, okay? Um, as far as washing and storing your knives, you do want to make sure you hand wash your knives. Don't put them in the dishwasher, not even in the top rack, okay? Your knives don't like to be in the dishwasher. So the best bet is to hand wash them using a mild detergent and a sponge. Don't keep your knives in a sink full of water because what happens when you go in <laughs> bad things, okay? So keep them out of the sink and then just wash them and dry them and put them away. The best storage for a knife is going to be in something called a knife block. A lot of you have seen that, okay? Because um, it keeps the blade safe. Or sometimes, some of you may have seen a magnetic strip. That's also a good solution. The third best would be in the drawer, all right? Things can happen. They get banged around. They might get chipped. It's not a great solution. When you put them in a block, yeah. does the wood dull it? Say no, it that's a good question. Yeah, you think maybe because it's like... Offer. No, I always put mine down, and then that way I know when I'm taking it out, it's going to be in a safe way. That's how yeah. I have mine. Yeah, that's a good question, though. And you think maybe like the, the wood going against the blade like that is going to dull it, but it's not going to. Okay. Um, before anyone leaves, too, before I get to the rest of the veggies, I want to make sure I do the drawing, because the prize is a new knife. Okay. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, and I chose this particular knife. It's a good starter knife. Okay. When you are choosing a knife, if you go to buy one yourself, do try to get one that's either all one piece or has the metal part going through the handle all the way to the bottom. That's going to create more stability. Does anyone have an old knife that the blade came out of the handle? Yeah. We don't want that, right? That's not good, especially if you're possibly but there's no reason that you have to spend hundreds of, uh, hundreds of dollars on a knife, okay? You can get certainly get a good knife for about $20 or $30. Um, another good brand besides the one that I'm giving away today is called Victorinox. So just think of the word victory and you'll be mostly there. And you can find that on Amazon. They make a very good chef's knife for about $25, okay? But did everyone fill out their name on one of the little raffle tickets before I draw a name? Robert. Huh. Look at that. <laughs> now you have a knife. Congratulations. And I did get this particular one on Amazon, um, but you can go to Target, you can go to Walmart, you can go to Bed Bath & Beyond. There are lots and lots of options available. Okay. All right. I'm going to go on to some more difficult, maybe possibly strange vegetables that you haven't seen before for those of you who want to stay. Okay. Um, who uses fresh garlic? Who likes to chop it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's fine. There are lots of good options as far as pre-chopped garlic. It's not a problem, right? Um, okay. Do you need a, a plastic bag to put this in? No, it's been another way. So oh, when no, I'll get it out of the way. Sorry. Um, and so the chopped garlic, go for it. Okay. 
okay? Because it's going to give you fresh flavor without putting in a lot of salt in your food. I do recommend that. But if you want to learn, yes. Do we see the pineapple? Do, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, maybe I'll do that before I do the garlic, so it's yeah. not sticky. <laughs> Let's do the pineapple then, okay? Fresh pineapple is fun. It's hard to cut, people think, but honestly, it's one of the easiest things that you can cut. All right? I see some nodding. So first of all, what you want to do is take the top off the pineapple. All right, everyone does that. So you take the top off. Does everyone know you can grow a plant from the top? It's pretty cool. Okay, I've got two of them at home. Yeah, I know, right? It's pretty neat. Um, so now you have two flat surfaces, and you can start from either side, all right? Um, usually what I like to do, though, is start so I'm cutting from the top down, okay? Now, how do you all usually do a pineapple? I've got it already. You get it already cut? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I've never knew what to do. Yeah. So just start with the top down, okay? And then you literally are just going down the side of the pineapple. Now, this one's a little unripe, so it's a little bit hard and you're just cutting the skin off, okay? You are gonna lose just a little bit of the pineapple flesh, but you'll notice that it's really not a lot, okay? Because the stuff that's near the skin is the stuff that's tough, and you don't wanna eat that anyway, all right? So once you get your skin off, and notice, again, just like everything else, I created that flat surface, and I'm using the anatomy of the pineapple to my advantage, okay? Then of course you can trim as you need to, but once you do this, go on and cut it down lengthwise because there's a core in the middle of the pineapple. And you can see it, it's just a little bit tougher than the rest of the pineapple. Once you expose that, you can just cut the meat away. Then you're left with the core you can toss that or compost it or give it to your rabbit or whatever. And trim as you need to, okay? Once you have these batons or these planks, it's just like cutting up the pepper. You do whatever you need to do, whether you make strips, like you did with the pepper, and then cut across, and then you've got some nice pineapple as a snack or your cereal or whatever. Does anyone want to practice? Delicious pineapple, you guys. We can all have some. And notice, too, keeping that tip on the board. That is the biggest tip I can impart to you guys. It gives you so much more control. Okay? All right. Any other questions about the pineapple? No. Was this a new thing for you guys? Feel like, do you feel like you could do it at home? Yeah? Okay. All right. How about butternut squash? Okay. Let me clean up my board. You want the new board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My lovely assistant will get me a new board. <laughs> you guys can eat some of that pineapple. Okay. So the butternut squash is like the bane of everyone's existence in the fall because you're all over the internet and you see all these great recipes and then you're like, what am I supposed to do with this thing? So take your sticker off. First. And I will tell you, if you, even after I demonstrate and you feel like you still can't do this, if you stick this in the microwave after stabbing it a few times with your knife, it'll be a lot easier to deal with because the microwave will cook it. And for one about this size, maybe about four minutes. All right, but do make sure that you ventilate it first. Okay, so when you have your squash, the first thing you want to do is separate the neck from the bowl. Okay? And yeah, you got to use a little muscle. But again, that's where a big knife like this is going to come in handy. Okay? So now you have two pieces with nice flat surfaces. Again, okay? Trim off that stem end. And if you need to, you can peel it. All squash peel is technically edible, but sometimes it, I don't know, the texture is a little rough. Okay? So I'm going to go on and peel this guy. And you can see it peels very easily. It's just like peeling a carrot, all right? If you want to peel this guy, now I'm comfortable with him, so I would go on and peel it. If you're not, okay, go on and cut this in half. You have a spoon or something, take these seeds out and save them. They're edible, 
just like pumpkin seeds, okay? Just rinse them off first, but we'll pretend that I'm saving these. But again, here you go, flat surface, right? And you can peel as necessary, okay? You can either do it that way, or you can hold it, I'll put it that way, and just go down the squash, okay? Once you have your squash all peeled, we'll pretend that this is peeled. You can just go down the squash, just like you did with the pepper, just like you did with the onion. You're always going to be using that sort of grid technique, all right? And that's going to give you a nice chop. It also helps you keep your pieces right around the same size, because when you're cooking your fruits or your vegetables, you want them to be the same size so they cook evenly. They all cook at the same time. Right? Does that make sense? And then when you have this big one, it's even easier. All right? You can even cut it into smaller pieces if that's easier for you to handle. Hold it up. Go on and cut those nice flat planks. And then do the same thing. even make nice even cuts. And of course this table is a little low for me, so it's, you know, but when you're in the kitchen and you have that counter that's waist high, you have a lot more control as well. Alright, so takeaway messages, hold your knife like you're shaking hands or a tennis racket, okay? Make sure it's sharp and always cut with your knife on the tip of the board. It gives you a lot more control. Does anyone want to stay and see some other veggies? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. The garlic, what you'll want to do, now remember, this is a clove and this is a bowl. Two very different things, okay? I've taught cooking classes where people confuse that. Um, if you want to take the clove off of the bulb, you can just use your fingers, or I've done this before in previous classes and the garlic does go flying, but if you're having a really bad day, you can hold the garlic and smash it against the board, okay? And it will separate. I'm gonna spare you guys from that right now, but it does totally work, okay? So once you've got your cloves, okay, you'll see that they naturally do have that flat surface. You're gonna take the flat surface of your big knife, Take the flat surface of your big knife and your palm. See how I'm holding the knife? Push down. Again, if you're having a bad day, this is really good medicine, okay? You'll see that it peels really easily once you do that. It just pops right off. So you don't want to just sit there and peel the garlic clothes. And I know that you all do that because I've seen it happen in classes, okay? And then once you have that, Half the job is already done for you, all right? And then keeping the tip of your knife on and using that claw, you're going to hold the garlic and just chop one way. And then you can either turn the garlic or turn the board and chop the other way. Nice and quiet, lots of control. And if you want to do another method called the fan, you keep that knife down and you just Use your hand to move it across the board. It's just like a pivot foot for playing basketball. Okay, you always keep one foot down. Okay, and that's what you do for chopping garlic, for chopping herbs, for anything small that you want to mince and make it small like that. Does anyone want to practice with the garlic? No? I will tell you that sometimes it makes it easier if you cut the little sort of belly button there off the garlic, okay? If you can get that off, sometimes it's easier to peel it as well. Right. Any more questions? Does anyone know what this thing is? One of our participants who had to leave was asking about this. This is a jicama. It gets, you see it in the grocery store fairly often now. And this is one of those things where you would just peel it and then make slices and just like we were doing practice with any of the other foods, y'all have to go.
Gotta go. Okay. All right. Um, thank you so much for attending today. If you didn't pick up your packet, please do so. If you didn't sign in, please do so. And if you all want some pineapple, I'll put up some more. It's delicious. Yeah, those chunks are ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much.